Hey, what's going on guys? John here from Ducast.com. Just doing a quick blog video on MailPile and installing it on a Mac computer rather than installing it on a server. So we're going to get this installed locally and you can see some of the tools that I have open here. And this would be the Mac installer and you'll see that I already have it installed on my Mac. I haven't done any configuration yet, so I haven't even opened up the app yet. Um, but I want to do that with you guys just to kind of walk you through and show you what it's going to look like if you install this on your Mac. Now, you can also install this on your Windows computer if you have Windows. Just go to downloads at mailpile.is and take a look at the Windows installer. And if you have Linux, you can go ahead and do that on Linux as well. But again, I'm going to be showing you how to do this on a Mac. So we're going to go ahead and download our Mac installer. And I'm assuming that uh, the... And I'm assuming that uh, the installation and the configuration of MailPile is going to be very similar on both the Mac and Windows. But if you uh, need any help or assistance, go ahead and check out the wiki page and uh, take a look at some of the facts here at uh, FAQs. And that should answer some of your questions here. And um, one thing to point out is that if you're going to be using uh, MailPile and your computer to be sending and receiving emails, you want to be aware that you're going to need to keep your computer on at all times because if your computer is going to be acting as an email server with MailPile on top of it, um, your computer needs to be on so that it can accept email that's going to be sent to uh, your email. But that's a topic and discussion for a whole nother, um, a whole nother thing. If you guys would like to see something like that, go ahead and go to Ducast.com. Give me some feedback on an episode request, and um, I'll look into creating an episode on installing that on a on a uh, server or on a local computer, and then having MailPile work with a local um, web email service um, on your server. That way it can send and receive locally and you just have that server on at all times rather than having your own computer on. So uh, just send me some feedback if you would like me to go ahead and look into doing that and uh, presenting that to you guys in an episode of Ducast. But again, we're just going to be installing MailPile on Mac and what that's going to do is it's going to use MailPile as the email client and we're going to use Gmail as the email server. Gmail is going to be taking care of um, sending and receiving the emails, and MailPile is going to do all the processing on the front end side. Um, but again, I recommend you check out the FAQ area, and uh, if you haven't already downloaded the installer, go ahead and do so. And just a quick overview of what MailPile is, if you haven't had the chance to read through it and take a look at the episode at Ducast.com. MailPile is an awesome new client that was actually on Indiegogo. And in Indiegogo, they raised about 163% of their goal. So they got 163 thousand dollars towards this project here and what MailPile does is it gives you uh, privacy and encryption all with no ads and the ability for it to be self-hosted so you can put on things like your laptop your desktop Raspberry Pi a server in the cloud which is what we do in Ducast.com or on a USB stick so it's pretty pretty cool here's what it's gonna look like uh, when you get this installed and if you're curious about how it looks and how it feels check out the demos area within uh, MailPile.is and again, take a look at all the information that they've presented here for this open source project here. If you're a developer, I recommend checking out the project on GitHub and uh, contributing if you can. But let's go ahead and jump into it right away. So if you have a Mac, you want to go ahead and open the installer, drag this app into your applications directory. I went ahead and went into my applications. I searched for MailPile here, and we're going to go ahead and open this up. Since this is a, a third-party app, what I can do is I can click on Open, since we have the Mac Gatekeeper here, and I'll just click on Open there, and it'll open up the app for me. All right, so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to show the MailPile setup page, where you can begin setting up MailPile on your local computer. You'll also notice the icon in the upper right-hand corner where it says it's starting up, you can open MailPile and you can quit MailPile. So this little convenient icon is gonna make things a little bit more convenient once you get things set up. So let's go ahead and begin. I'll click on begin here. It's gonna take us to the passphrase area. Go ahead and make this difficult for someone to go ahead and guess because this is gonna be your key and your passphrase to your email. And it's also gonna be for your encryption keys. So go ahead and make this difficult. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the movie real quick. I'm gonna enter something in here 
and then I'm going to unpause and we can continue from there. All right, so now I've entered in my passphrase. I'm going to click on authenticate. Uh, this is one password asking me if I would like to save that. And then it's going to be creating your encryption keys. So your encryption keys are being created. The process may take a little bit. So go ahead and just continue with your um, setup of mail pile here. And what we're going to do first is we're going to add our profiles here. I'm just going to add in my Gmail profile. And to do that, all I have to do is enter in my name, my email, and the sending route will be set for us automatically. Now, as I was entering in my Gmail address, so as soon as I put gmail.com, this popover showed, and basically it's telling you to check your Google security settings to make sure that the following conditions are met. So make sure you go ahead, you go into your Google security settings, you go under security, and you make sure that the following conditions are met. So enable access for less secure apps, so non-Google apps, and that means that third-party apps, and uh, generate a Google two-step app password. Now you can go ahead and do that if you wish to. Uh, you can click on Gmail's two-step app password here if you would like to. But I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to close this out, okay? And then I'm going to enter in my password here. As soon as I finished entering my password in, it went ahead and it checked if it could successfully connect to Gmail with the credentials and it was able to and then it automatically set the route to Gmail sending. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this to personal and then I'm going to save the profile and I'll show you in a second what the Gmail settings are. So if I go ahead and I click on add profile and sorry not Gmail settings but the sending route is. So if I click on add new route what they'll do is they'll take me to another page where I can enter in some SMTP information for another server. But I'm going to go ahead and go back. I have this one profile set up. I'll click on next here and it's going to go ahead and it's going to check the mail source. Now first thing it's going to do is check if I configure the mailboxes and it's, and it's not configured yet. What that basically means if I click on configure now is it's going to try to match the mailboxes within Gmail to the mailboxes within MailPile. So it went ahead and it automatically created what it thinks would work great in terms of tags. Um, compared to mailboxes in terms of the association between mailboxes and tags. So it's going to go ahead and associate that for you. And then you can go ahead and apply certain settings like um, apply the inbox tag to these messages, apply the drafts tag to these messages, and so on and so forth. So you can also choose if you want to import the messages. I'm not going to. I don't want to import all those messages onto MailPile. I just want to go ahead and move forward with this. But again, if you want to use this and you want to start using this as your um, dedicated email client, you can go ahead and import all those messages. Uh, but I'm just going to not import them. And um, from now on, uh, whatever is imported after that will be new email that hasn't been read. So let's go ahead and save this. It's going to say that I'm not connected to the server. And that's okay for this example. I didn't set up the two-step password, uh, the app password, so that's probably why. And um, what I'll do is I'll just click on next and I'll begin the tour. And this is just basically what it's going to look like once you have it all set up. So I'll go to the inbox. If you want to, you can back up your encryption key and passphrase right now. I don't want to do that, but if you want to, you can go ahead and go here, enter your passphrase in here, and click on continue. Now for some of you, the encryption keys could still be generating in the background. So you may not be able to back it up right now, uh, but just keep that in mind that it is in your settings area. Now, if I take a look at the inbox, nothing is going to be found because I didn't import anything. If you did import something, you'll likely see all of the messages within here along with the tags on the left hand side. Now once you have this installed, I recommend taking a look at all the different cool features that you have. You can go ahead and you can compose emails from here. You can add an encryption key. You can go ahead and sign the email. That way people know it's definitely from you and it's legit. And then you can go ahead and you can add your contacts here. You can add tags here for better organizational purposes. You can donate and contribute to the MailPile project if you would like to. And it's highly recommended if you choose to have MailPile as your dedicated email client. I definitely recommend giving back to the people who are taking care of you. And then, of course, you have your settings here where you can add more profiles, which are basically more email profiles where you can send from different email addresses, whether it be your personal, your work, your hobby, or things like that. You can also choose more mail sources. We can add another source here if we would like to. We can add more sending routes here. So if Gmail is not sending our emails or if we want to send it from a different um, SMTP 
server, then we can go ahead and add another route here. No problem. And uh, if we want to change the language, we can go ahead and change the language to whatever it needs to be at. So I'll just go back. Furthermore, you can take a look at your encryption keys and set some security settings if you wish to. All right, so apparently my Mac needed to restart after um, recording because I uh, Camtasia had bummed out on us real quick. But anyhow, to continue, I'm just going to log back into MailPile here uh, with my passphrase. One thing I did before it, um, Camtasia kind of crapped out on me was I sent an email to myself just to test out the configuration to make sure that it was working. And I did get the email from MailPile, so it did connect with Gmail via SMTP. It sent me the email to one of my other email addresses here, and we were successfully able to uh, send mail out. And there's a couple of things that I want you to notice with MailPile here. And the first one is that when you first open MailPile, you'll notice that there is a command line prompt that opens up. And what this basically does, it gets the web interface started on our local host. So right now, if someone tried to access our IP address with this port number, they would be denied being able to see this page. So pretty much only those that are on this computer can go to this web address right here and access MailPile and see this MailPile web interface. Now you can change this if you wish to, but if you're using it on a Mac or Windows computer, I don't recommend you changing this. And you can take a look at ducast.com and take a look at how we set that up on a web server so that you can access it via an external computer. But we'll just go ahead and leave that settings um, alone. One other thing that I want to show you was the activity logs for MailPile. So if I pull in activity monitor here, you'll see that it's only using a very small amount of memory for this email client. And you'll see that it's listed as Python because it does use a, uh, a Python web server to go ahead and deliver this and it is using Python. So MailPile is built on the Python language. So just uh, keep that in mind that it's only using a minimal amount of resources on your computer. And again, if you want to access MailPile at any time, so say you closed out the browser here and you want to access it any time, you can come up to the upper right hand corner, open MailPile up in here, and then you can go ahead and access MailPile from your browser once again. If you do notice any bugs or anything that uh, is kind of out of the ordinary, I recommend going to MailPile.is and uh, reporting it to them. Um, on GitHub. So if you have any questions, I encourage you to go to their GitHub page or send them a tweet on uh, twitter.com slash mailpile team. And um, I'm sure they'll be happy to hear from you. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great rest of the day. And until next time, take care.